In a press conference today, PTI's leadership has demanded that the Chief Justice Islamabad High Court, Justice Amir Farooq, must resign. The letter by the six judges of the Islamabad High Court makes it clear that they had repeatedly informed Chief Justice Amir Farooq about the pressure and intimidation they were facing. Yet, despite being informed verbally and in writing, the Chief Justice took no action. What we are experiencing is judicial surrender, said Rauf Hassan, adding that the superior judiciary must retain its independence. Advocate Naim Panjata detailed a series of events where former Prime Minister Imran Khan was the victim of injustice. Weaponization of the criminal justice system against him was apparent and the judge's letter has revealed the forces behind it. Mr Khan has been unjustly incarcerated now for 237 days. All workers and supporters of PTI have been requested to join a massive rally in Peshawar on Sunday. The party's central leadership will lead the rally to call for justice for the judiciary and to demand that the state free unjustly incarcerated former Prime Minister Imran Khan, former Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi, the party's President Chaudhary Parvez Ilahi and all other political prisoners. Meanwhile, at the call of PTI leader Murad Saeed, protests have been carrying out in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province this week, asking for the release of Imran Khan, safety of the party leaders, including Murad Saeed, as well as the return of the party's stolen mandate. <laughs> The Special Investment Facilitation Council are said to have met at the Prime Minister's office to review a new education policy. Officials say that the new policy would focus on out-of-school children and technology deficit. An education emergency was also on the agenda. The Pakistan Dehri Kinsav's government, which was removed after a clandestine vote of no confidence in the April of 2022, had started reforms in the Department of Education by allocating a significant chunk of the budget to education while starting work on a single national curriculum that would help even students from underprivileged backgrounds get a sound education. Anel Shiline, a U.S. State Department official working on human rights issues in the Middle East, resigned Wednesday in protest of U.S. support for Israel's assault on Gaza. Shiline, who worked as a foreign affairs officer in the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor, called out the Biden administration's horrific policies engaging in, and quote, actions that contravene American values so directly, she wrote. While the Biden administration did not veto the most recent United Nations Security Council's motion for an immediate ceasefire, it is worth noting that the United States is rooting for a six-week humanitarian ceasefire and not a permanent end to the war.